name of the show is The Way to Go. My name is Alan Bendich. I'm going to be your host. And uh, guess who's back on the show? Mr. Max Bendich. Welcome back, Daddy. Hello, my darling son. How are you? I, I couldn't be better. And a smile like that, I'm a winner. That's it. So, Pop, it's been a while. Uh, last time we spoke with you, you were 98 years old. And on March 25th, you became 99. Mm -hmm. So wh what's it like? How, do you feel a year older? Nope. There's no such thing. Alan, a day is a day. And as I told you this, alone, one other thing, the days become weeks, the weeks become year, months, the months become years, and, and slowly, you, you hope they're going slowly, 99, bing! <laughs> so since the last time we saw you, uh, you were in a couple of shows. Uh, we'll talk about the show that you were in with a famous movie star. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is Stephen Baldwin, right. and the movie you were in was called Tapestry. Right. Now, I remember I, had, I was telling you to do, do it a specific way, but it turned out that it was the exact opposite. Could you tell me a little bit about what yeah. happened on Tapestry? So, you and I, we were having a good time. We were really rehearsing. Alan, I felt good because I knew my script. I knew everything. And we, we go to where, they, where they're going to be shooting Queens, everything, right? wherever it was. I right. don't remember, right? But, and it was a rainy day. No, it had, the rain just stopped, but the, so we come to the place and I'm supposed to see somebody ranting and raving and I see nobody. All I see is a car coming up on the other side of the street where I am and stand, standing there. And I take a look in the back, cameras. Right. Now the camera was in the front, there was the letter of a camera behind on the side and all right, I'm waiting for the fellow, and, I, and I, another car comes up. Now, I don't know anything about it, but I, know, I may have noticed, I don't know, somebody sitting there right. and nothing. And all of a sudden, the, uh, uh, I can't remember. He was one of the producers. The producer. Right. The producer, a wonderful man. He liked me. I Michael Yacovone. He, 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 yeah. he gives me a push and says, go on, you're on. And I didn't hear. <laughs> Alan, I know. Were you scared? I was frightened. No, I'm not. Why? Because I wanted to make good for you, frankly. I, 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 I read Alan. Mm -hmm. I was frightened. I knew my script, and I start walking slowly, and I'm going, where am I going? To the car. There's nowhere else to go. And I see them, they are making, uh, setting uh, up the cameras. They're, they're filming it. Right. They're filming it. Finally, finally, I come to the store, to the, to the car. To the car. I look in. And there's a man sitting there. Stephen Baldwin. Well, I don't know. But well, I'm letting you know who he know, is. I okay. don't know. Stephen Baldwin. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, now remember, the door is over here. There's a camera behind them, and it, they're, uh, they're taking the picture. And he's like this. I remember this. He, he, was, he was like this. He was like down, and he was yes. upset. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, and he's like this. And, and, then, I'm, and I uh, and walk over. over. And you do what? Let's do the scene. Uh, all right. And I look at him, and... Uh, I suppose it's talking, and I count five to myself, and I said, he's giving me a cue. And, and what did I say? Uh, are you, I, you okay, sir? Uh, uh, are you okay, son? Uh, are you okay, son? Uh, are you okay, son? And he doesn't say a word. I'll do my, I'll do it. And he doesn't I'll say, do it. and another I'll five, do it. I'll do it. five few seconds. Go ahead. I'm fine. See the word. But the way you're looking at me, he doesn't do that. Oh. He looked at me this way, and he only, I only, oh, okay. all right, then okay, so. I'm fine. And I looked at him and I said, I'm not going to answer you fast. Fast, right. And then I looked at you and looked at you. You could have fooled me. And I kept on looking, and nothing was happening, and I'm shivering. Alan, you're I'm shaking in your pants. <laughs> shaking. I want to make good. I want to, and then. And then they Finally, say, I turn around and you walk away. And I walk away towards the camera, off camera, toward the camera, toward the camera, right. toward the, where the car is, right. and it's all over. And they say, "Cut." No, well, I don't know. They said but, that. But Alan. And then you know what happened? The, you did it a couple of times from different angles. Right. And the next day, um, the director Ken Kushner emailed me saying, "You know, I knew your dad could do it because he had worked. You had worked on another show with him called The Psychotics, but he said I didn't know he was going to nail it so well. Just tell him, 
tell your father that he did it perfectly, that it was great. And it was so intense. He said, I didn't, and then he said, I love, I love the Bendich boys. That's what he said. He but said Alan, I also heard something called, take a different, uh, take two, take yeah. three. You know? yeah. But it was different. Went, it was different and all of a sudden, nothing had happened. I don't realize that's what's happening. Right. And I, well, I'm still standing over there right. knowing that I think they're satisfied. They're not asking me to repeat it. Not only did, were they satisfied, what happened afterwards? Remember, we were finished. Yes. Then we went, uh, then Stephen Baldwin said he wanted to take some pictures with you. So we took a couple of pictures, and then Stephen Baldwin, you went up to Stephen Baldwin, and you were, you were just turned, you were about to turn 99 or whatever. You said, you came over, you took his hand like this, and you said, may we see each other next, be together again next year. He said, We'll be together at the premiere. Yeah. That's what he said. And I thought that was the nicest thing that he said. You know, and again, I that, that was sweet. I, I heard, but it, it, I don't understand that, but, yeah. but whatever. I felt good. I was talking to him. Again, I, it's a shame to say that I did not know Stephen Baldwin. Right. I didn't know him, all right? right. But to know that you did he was job. satisfied with me. Now, and the, but the director was even more satisfied. And the producer was. <laughs> And Alan, you did a I, great job. I did a, and, 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 and Alan. <laughs> and one of the other, uh, there were two other, you know, I don't know, two other stars in the movie. We, the, one of them was Tina Louise, yeah. who played Ginger yeah. on I know, uh, I Gilligan's I Island. I and there was Burt Young, who is also in, he was in um, the Rocky movies. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a guy named uh, Joey D'Onofrio in it. And he was in, know. well, I'll tell you who he All is. Right. He was in Goodfellas, and he was in The Bronx Tale. Oh, that's so these were, these were big movies, and he was in the movie that you're in, Pop, and you, you nailed it. You did a great job. <laughs> and, I, and all of a sudden, I know whom, and I came over there. Yeah. I diagnosed it, correct, no, the whole I thing. Know. Alan, if you think I, look, look at me. See, <laughs> that, that's how I felt. But you know what, Dad? I'll, I'll tell you, 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 you are, you, you're able to, you react well, and you improv well, and that was the whole thing. It was just a matter of looking at the situation. Do I want to do it quickly if this guy's going slow? I don't think so. So you were able to analyze the situation, and you did it. So I was proud of you. You did a great job. I didn't, uh, all that, uh, it's good. I mean, right. uh, that's smearing it on more. No, but it was, no, no, but it was good. No, right, right. I mean, it could, have, it could have gone either way. I know, it could have so, gone. <laughs> Alan, boy, could have gone. And, I mean, but he was a nice one? guy to you. I mean, even when we first met him, when you we were going over the lines, he mm -hmm. came in. He was a regular guy. It was just a, it was right. a, a regular guy. Now, there's another project that you're working on, which LMC TV is actually uh, going to have on TV. It's called Scriptless. Mm -hmm. And, to, you know, to be honest with you, the reason why I did Scriptless in the beginning was because I was concerned. This is before you got Tapestry. I wanted you to work, you know, because I figured all of a sudden you get, you know, you, you want to act. And the, the easiest way for you to act is if we have our own shows. That's right. You know? So um, I came up with a, an idea of having like a family, that, you know, a dysfunctional family. And, uh, and you know, it's based on, loosely based on reality. And it has all, all the names of the characters have something to do with our lives, mm -hmm. by the way. So, uh, and you played the patriarch of the family. Well, I was, I, I, by the only, only, and I'm happy because... Why? Because I was the oldest, right. and, 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 and I looked at it, and I felt good, and uh, yeah, I got the family together, I right. did I, I did Yeah, because best. part of the story, uh, I, I'm not going to give too much away, but the brothers don't get along, mm -hmm. and you want them to get along. And but there's other stories that you're not telling yet, and that because we're still in the midst of doing it. And let, can I say a little bit about Scriptless? Scriptless is a dramatic improv, and we yeah. have unbelievable yeah. actors. I mean, Noah, I'm the, the guy that plays your other son, didn't you think he was a great actor? Right. I mean, but when you told me that it was going to be improv and not script, here I see I'm sitting there, and my two, my two sons are coming out, and they're fighting, and they're fighting, and they're hollering. And I get up, and I start hollering. <laughs> Alan, I start hollering. Shut up. <laughs> they are, you, he's your brother. He's your brother. Listen to me. Don't. And Alan... I felt We're, good. Why? Because at that you, moment, I knew I'm not going to be reading from a script. That, that you was had me. freedom, right? I'm the father. I'm, yeah. I'm telling them, look, they are brothers. And however, you had freedom, right? Because you weren't limited. You were able to respond naturally. Not, not, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. And, but, I didn't, and I didn't realize that, though. And, and, and Xavier, who's our cameraman, was on the set that day. 
and uh, which is great. So it was. Uh, we had a good time that day. We, Al, we, I, we, I had a, I had a good time. Yeah. Because and, here, and they even said later on, you know, when they no the, the camera wasn't on. Uh, Listen to me scream. <laughs> what am I? Oh, I'm not my toes. <laughs> and it fit. Right. The whole thing was it fit in the, in the talk. It right. fit in, in the situation. And that's what you hope the story, you hope a story has a storyline, you know? <laughs> so it's a, but the other thing, I mean, maybe we're going to have to get your girlfriend on the show because it looks like everybody else on the show except for me has a girlfriend. But it, it's interesting. The, the, it's fun. You know, I, it's interesting because it's also my directorial debut, you know? And uh, that was something actually that Dina suggested. Uh, Dina's our, our production supervisor here at LMC TV. And uh, she said, are you going to direct? And I said, hmm. Now, yeah, I was a little nervous about it, and I, I still am. No, well, <laughs> but it was a great idea, because it, it, when you direct, it just gives you a whole different perspective of, of filmmaking. And you also say, oh my god, now I know what the directors go through, you know, oh. from, from actors. And what, I th mm -hmm. and what I found out about this thing, the words are there. Right. You do not change the words. Right. That's how you are presenting them right. one way. Oh, like you mean the story? The story is a, the story, whatever it right. is. The story, yeah. right? The whole thing is, and we had one actor that changed the story a little bit, but it actually didn't. It didn't hurt too much, but it, it made it. I had to start thinking again. But that's what happens with improv. You know, you start getting it. You know, that's right. people start doing it, and then all of a sudden, the story might change somewhat, and then you just have to go with it. You have to be flexible. And. Uh, but uh, uh, something else, I don't, th I don't remember this, but I, th I don't think that we had to do a, a repeat. Oh, no, no, what, what we do, I think we the most we do, what we do is, and also th that was one of the premises of the show, was I was going to say that, uh, you know, we're walking a tightrope. Yes. Okay? Oh, boy. So you walk a tightrope and you only get one or two shots. That's it. I don't want more than two shots at all. I mean, you know, if, if you do three, you're doing it wrong. And the other thing is that I also look at this... You know, I mean, hopefully it'll be a nice product, but I look at it as an exercise and something that we're all learning because we're all growing in this. And I also think, to a certain extent, that the cream will rise to the crop. Right now, I mean, the top, not the crop, mm -hmm. the top. And basically what I'm thinking is that the best are going to continue with the show and the people who feel not so good about it, because not everybody's good at improv, you know, good at improv. So, uh, and I think people are going to realize whether they can do it or not. And right now we have 13 actors. I, I can't see um, having 13 principal actors on a show. I think eventually we're going to have to whittle it down a little bit. But the way that the way you had done, uh, the way it was going along, right? The way it was going along, and when I finally got disgusted, I wasn't told to do it, and every, I got there and I actually made them. I screamed at them, right. stop it and do this. It had to be because it was part of. It had to be done at that moment, but it was part of the, and it worked. I know and it was fantastic. Yeah. And the thing, the good part is, is that the other actors appreciated your your performance. Well, and that's the thing. Again, if you if it, when you're cooking or when you're doing good, you know, it. The there's a there's a good sense on the set when pe you know the, everyone supports everybody else, and you know there's there's always the hope that it could be a springboard to something else, you know? And it, I, I keep on getting new ideas. And, you know, and the other thing, on Facebook, I, I communicate with all the cast on, on Facebook. And, you know, I'm constantly, I mean, the other thing is when you're the director, the producer, and the writer, that's all you have to think about. You're only, I, you know, like I'll go on the way to work, I'm thinking, okay, what are we gonna do with this character, you know? I'm trying to make sure that, we, you know, we got all the characters working and, and satisfied in the parts that they have. And it's it's oh. juggling a lot of different things. Well, with me, you didn't have to juggle. I know because th there were two brothers, right. and they weren't so young. Of it. and he, the father had to be a little older, and the father was sitting there right. watching those two brothers. Okay, there's one of the pro project I want to. I mean, I'm very happy about scriptless. I'm happy we're doing it because it gives you an opportunity. Mm -hmm. We're shooting again in the end of April, and I'm planning to shoot if we can, if we can do it, get everything, all the variables together. I'd like to shoot two more episodes in May. But the thing that's, uh, that LMC, you know, the, another project that we're going to be doing with the help of LMC TV is, um, is going to be something called The Laundry Man. And the laundry man, you were a laundry man, right? I was a laundry man. <laughs> and uh, the story is going to be revolving around eight days, or I think it's eight or ten days, I forgot exactly how many, uh, in 1969, 
And we've talked about it on the show, basically, uh, when you got shot. Yes. And uh, it's kind of self-serving, because I'm going to play you, because I'm about, I'm four years older than you were when you got shot. Mm -hmm. And you're going to play your father. And I already cast one person to play Mimi, Miriam. Mm -hmm. And I've already played, and her name is uh, Jennifer Keen. Right. And uh, I've already played in a movie last week, believe it or not, I played her father. Uh, in another movie, a SAG movie, which is nice, and she's also in Scriptless. And uh, I'm also thinking about another project of doing like a documentary of, of your life. To, and, uh, and it's going to be called The Road to 100. That's something I haven't discussed with anybody yet on the, at the television. I'm going to do it. You know, one way or another, I'm going to do it. I, wanna f I want basically to do like behind the scenes of what your life is like now and maybe show what other people's lives are like who are at your age and like the, you know, because you even said before that it's not true. What you're doing in life, no one at your age does. Believe me, that, that, I, want, I, I didn't want to interrupt you. That's right, Alan, I don't understand it. How am I doing, I, I see the other people in Kitay House. I see how they act. Beautiful, good people, and they act, they're right, they'll answer questions, wonderful words, that, and their knowledge, Two of them are PhDs, and you know they're old and everything, everything. But yet, I get it. So here am I. I'm going th through. They're almost the same thing. But Alan, I love people, Alan. I know. And, and what did I, do I notice? Again, let me talk about a talk little about, about anything you want, Eddie. About, about the Kate House. Yes. Not only Kate House, and I want to say to this: every place like the Kate House. Who's a, a buddy they expect? What is it? They're assisted living and so. And it's assistant living. It could be the richest, it could be the poorest. They are all the same. What do I mean by they are all the same? Almost all of them have walkers, they have strollers, they have aids, they can't hear, they can't see, they can't talk, they can everything, whatever you think, they have all the ailments. Everyone from the cheapest to the most, most expensive. expensive. Now, no, wait, wait. Listen, talk, get, talk to the audience. Now, now, what am I trying to bring out? What is the difference between all those people? When somebody new comes into, when someone new comes into Kate House, usually they're in a chair or something else. And believe me, very few people in that chair meet anybody successfully. All right, they are put at a table, and they are, and it's difficult. Now, what happened? Again, a guy like me, I made up my mind a long time. I don't, I don't know how. I'd, and they would come in, men or women. And with the men, I would joke around. And to show you how I would joke around about Three weeks after, and this happened more than, but this time I, I remember, three weeks after, this man is coming out with an aide from mailing a letter or something, and right across the way is the assistant manager, and I stop him, we talk, and then he says, you know, you're the only one who has spoken to me in three weeks. I looked at him, my God. I went into the director. I said, it should not be this way. And she said, oh, no, Mr. Bender, I know all about that. I said, you know what you should have? It's something like they have in the, in the Catskills. Right. A senior day, okay. a thing. You have tables for four, yeah. put two men, and put two women. Absolutely. They'll kill each other. Mm -hmm. They'll do this. Right. But at least one thing, you know one thing, it's not for them. Maybe two people will find out. Right. And Alan, one of the hardest things in being old is for me to go over to a man, even to a man, to a woman, and say, and, and believe me, I, I'm not talking, they're all the most beautiful ladies in the world. And I said, look, you have a beautiful face, so you have this. It doesn't happen, Alan. It, and it hurts. Alan, it hurts. You know, I was there today, right? I, I came to pick you up to bring right. you to the show, to be with your grandson, Aaron, and his friends from school. And while I was waiting, I didn't want to rush you because I, I knew you had to eat before you came and all this. 
and I was seeing these, these people, and one lady was saying, I'm cold, I'm cold. No one was listening to her. Mm -hmm. Then I saw another, you know, like, I just saw people wandering around, not, no one helping them, but they are, but also, it must be difficult for the AIDS too, to, because they're constantly dealing with that all day long. I mean, maybe you get immune to it. I mean, you can't be attentive all the time, but you, then you start thinking, man, that's, that, that's my mother, that's my father, that could be, that's a human being. And I think these places, sometimes you lose, you know, you wind up not really, you lose your hum humanity a little bit when you're stuck in these places. I, 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 yeah, whereas I, I hope you know, I, yeah. I don't understand those words. I'm an, I have a, the optimist. I'm, I'm, Alan, your father is an optimist. He has always been an optimist. And again, uh, life, uh, Tim, thank you, Alan. Yeah. I drink to you. Yeah, but, but you're right, though. I mean, but I felt, I just felt when I heard that lady, and she looked like a skeleton, and I heard her saying, I'm cold, I'm cold, and her aide didn't get her like um, something, to, like a shawl or something to put on her. She was just cold, and you could see her arms were bare, and I'm thinking, what, you know, what? And she, I'm sure the, the, the aide wasn't a bad person. She was talking that's to him. That's right. But she didn't get, make her warm. That's, a, that's, that, that's what this is all about, Alan, meaning they are trying their best, all these places, to get them to be a little, a, a sat, a, the word is satisfied. Right. Because what else? They give you lectures. They give you uh, things to, to act even in and to, to sing and to do this. Right. We have a... Um, you have an improv group. We have an, uh, we have an improv, uh, and, and I, I, make it, I make it my business, I'm there, with them. not often, but, but I'm there. And again, we are happy that we can spend, the day is over eventually. Right. The day but is I'll, over. I'll put this, I gotta, uh, you know, the thing is, you have something that a lot of people don't have, other than, I'm just, uh, you have something to look forward to. I mean, we, these, like, things like acting or coming to this show, I mean, these are the things that make life interesting, right? Alan, until a couple of years ago, right. oh, I, I didn't know anything about this. Right. All of a sudden, you said, come on, and they uh, to try this. But, it, I mean, but you look at the other people, they don't have that, you know? And they, who, I mean, not, no one has this, really. That's right. Not a soul, of the, and I'm the, on, I'm the only one, and they call me the actor. <laughs> <laughs> and people, and I even have this little thing over the... Uh, uh, it's called uh, love story. No, or, it's it's called no elapse. love story. Elapse. Uh, elapse, no, elapse on Vimeo, right. and on the bottom I'll tell you a love story. Uh, uh, right. And so mm -hmm. here I am dancing, and uh, yeah. I'm, I'm on the YouTube, and yeah. I, I uh, and the people like what they see, right. and I tell them jokingly, I'm doing it. You can do it too, but right. you have to. But have it's, it. you have to have you have to have someone who's going to help you with it too. <laughs> You have to have the willpower. Right. It's, it's, it, it hurts. Alan, it hurts. But again, let's talk about better, things more appropriate. Right. So again, so now from before what we were talking, right. now we have, we're actors. Right. And you and I. You, you, and, what, and what happens? You come over to me, look, we're, we're going down to... NYU, <laughs> and NYU is on 23rd Street, yeah, well, and another NYU yeah. is right near the, uh, yeah, then we have the, the bridge. Right, right near the bridge. Right, we have all over the place. You have to go down to one all the way near Battery Park. Near Battery, remember, remember that, that one? one? Right, and we also have Columbia on right. 160th. <laughs> what do I love about this? First of all, you get me out of the, <sighs> you get me out of Kate House. It's not, it's not so bad, Kate House. Yeah. But you get me out of Kate House, I go downtown, I go, it, it's, I'm looking at uh, 42nd Street. I, I never would, I never would do that be, uh, since uh, for quite some time. Right. But and I consider myself what a lucky man I am. By luck, that's all. My because my son had asked me. To, so maybe I'd even said, "Ah, oh, baloney," you know. I said, maybe I said, but I must have said, "Okay, let's oh, no, try." You were excited about it. I do uh, remember, I and it was like, uh, "Let's do it." But then you also got nervous. No, no, was, <laughs> nervous, Alan. You, you don't. You, you have to be nervous. It's something new. You're looking at a camera. They're taking you, and and not that. Yeah. 
<laughs> Alan, yes. it could have happened. That right. It didn't happen. That's it. You, you actually led me good, well, and I actually came back and we no, did we, it. No, we, we do this good, well. Right. And, I, <laughs> and as I told many of the people there, yeah. we never spoke to each other in our lives. That's as, true. In those two years right. that we had spoken and to. And also, the other thing is you're a pretty good actor, and I, I really enjoy you know, your performances, and that's why I can't wait to play. I can't wait to, to see you play your father in The Laundry Man, because uh, that's going to be an interesting portrayal. We've got to find someone who's going to play your mother. That's going to be... All right. And, uh, it's, it's, and I have to find someone who's going to play the, your, your wife. Your now, one thing I've, uh, I've, I wanted to say. Yes. My wife, your, your mother, helped me out in the laundry. Right. My mother never went to work. I know. Never, you know, the joke, I say, she never went to work. She <laughs> sold the pants, she sold this, she took care of three kids. Right. She took care, not only three kids, three kids with two tryouts. I know. I was the first, and then she liked it so much, she made twins. <laughs> maybe we'll get twins the next. <laughs> oh, God. There's a young lady I know. that came back. So we've got to figure out who's going to play her. And Dad, maybe you'll come, if you, if you want, you can come to auditions. You know who else might come to auditions? Frank, our friend Frank Sinclair, oh. who's uh, the writer. And I'm excited about it, it because you know, it gives, it's another dream that we have, right, that's going to come true. That, the dream that will come true, Alan. And so yeah. far, all our dreams, everything that we talked about doing has happened, right? I mean, no. uh, So how can it happen to us? No, right, we, we can't talk about that. We don't. Right. How can we tell it happen to us and not for this guy? And they have, been, they have better schooling than I had, or this right. one, and they had to do it better. Well, I think okay. if you put your mind to something, really, I mean, something like this, and if there's, the thing is, if there's opportunities and you go for it. I think, Alan, the, uh, there it is. There's no opportunity, maybe, for That's it. it. Alan, the, the, when I think of it, and most of them are again, and they're disabled. Right. They're, they're, they're disabled. Know, they are they disabled. They cannot be held. And, and we're, what are they going to do? And their whole life revolves around Kate House. And, and, and their children can't come to them all the time. There's no one to take them out of Kate House. You can't help that. I know. It is. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not no, no, I mean, the children. I mean, for, for, for they the have people lives. To know, right. the, and I, whenever I see somebody come over to, to one of my friends, Right. Make sure you come here often. Make sure you come here often. Mm -hmm. The idea is, again, when you think about it, parents have no time for their children, right. but parents have uh, uh, their whole lives for their grandchildren and for their great-grandchildren. No, think of it. At that moment, I mean, for the children, we're working and we're doing something else, and with the grandchildren already, it's a few years later, right. and you have more time for them, and and, That's tough. And, the li uh, and yet life is good. Life is wonderful, Dad. Right. And you know what? Right now, my life is better than it ever has been. And it's really a result of, of being able to have shows like this with you and doing films with you and experiencing the things that I enjoy most in life. But you know what? What makes me really sad, there's only always just one thing that makes well. me really sad. When I have to tell you this. <laughs> it's a wrap. Good night, folks. Sweet thing, honey pie, looking good, come my eye, a dicky vibe, your smile, come here, let's talk for a while, I'm loving your company, feeling the electricity, can't explain this chemistry, something's coming.